Man, I love me some beans, but what I love more than beans, a good steak dinner to go along with it. That's not what you get here. Actually, in real life, I don't even like beans, but what I do like, jelly beans, and that is what's on the Samsung Galaxy S2 on T-Mobile. How's it going, guys? I'm Aaron Baker from PhoneDog.com, and the T-Mobile version of Samsung's Galaxy S2 has Android 4.1. Let's take a look in the hands-on walkthrough video. Here's Android 4.1 running on the T-Mobile Galaxy S2, and I think for a lot of people, if you were thinking about getting the Galaxy S3 or maybe even the Galaxy S4, you got some time to spare now that this device has Android 4.1.2, because yes, the S3 and the S4 have more features, but if you're looking for some of those kind of system things that you get with Android 4.1 or 4.2, you're going to be pretty happy with this update. First of all, you can see out of the gate, the notifications area looks totally different here. You can see it's much more fitting to what you would see on the Galaxy S3 with Android Android 4.1 with a newer version of TouchWiz, and granted, it doesn't have the same nature effect type unlocking mechanism that the Galaxy S3 does. So you see that it kind of keeps its own brand identity there. They're not trying to bring all the nature UI stuff over onto the Galaxy S2 because at some point they may get too close and people may say, why would I upgrade? And obviously, an OEM never wants that. They want to keep you happy, but then they want to keep you happy, so happy, in fact, that you upgrade to their current product and then the next product and then the next product. So you get how overall kind of how the marketing scheme works. But you can see again, Android 4.1 running right here, TouchWiz user interface, a lot of the same icons moved over on Android 4.1 on the Galaxy S2. And out of the box, same T-Mobile stuff here, 411 and more, mobile hotspot, music hub, I actually shouldn't say out of the box, I really should say after the update or out of the update, whatever you want to call it. T-Mobile My Account, T-Mobile Name ID, T-Mobile TV, and you're obviously seeing some different looks and feels here in terms of the icons. You know, they look a little bit different in some cases. Visual Voicemail, Quadrant Standard, which I installed so we can do a quick Quadrant Standard test. And again, just a lot of little things across the board. So Project Butter is running behind this, so I just find it to be faster overall versus Android 4.0. And you can see when you go to the wallpaper, for example, you've got your home screen wallpaper, and we'll jump in here. And so you see the original Android 4.0 homepage wallpapers, and then you've got over here, the Galaxy S3-esque and Note 2-esque wallpapers as well. So you do get that brought over onto the T-Mobile Galaxy S2. And then other inclusions, I should say, bubble style, background style, and the text messaging. So when I go into messaging, I can customize and make this message my own. So for example, with bubbles, bubble style, I can change this around, make it my own if I want to, and of course the typical blue and yellow out of the box. But I can change this much like the Galaxy S3, much like the Note 2, I've got that feature where I can move those around and really make those my own. And same thing with the background. I can create a custom background if I want to and then make that my background for text messages. And as you can see, I'll do it real time on camera so you can watch. And then there's that. And we'll say, whoops, just for example. And we'll make that our background. And Shazam. I didn't save it, but you get the idea. Maybe it auto-saved for me. And then when I send a message, it'll be there out of the box. Now, keyboards, you may be asking, for example, you've got swipe keyboard pre-installed, and then you've got, what else? Google Voice typing and Samsung keyboard as well. So swipe for your input, and then Samsung's keyboard pre-installed as well. So you can see kind of a lag here, but keep in mind, I just installed the uh, OS update. So keep that in mind. Lag, a little bit, not too much. Other things you see, Google Now integration, and of course, uh, Task Manager as well. And you've got that right here. So Google Now powering up, and I can take advantage of that if I see fit. And then recent applications as well, where I can come in here and kill off my tasks if I desire. And I've got those right there. So again, very, very similar across the board, at least in some aspects, to what you get from the S3 and the Note 2. So some updates like that really make it a nice little bump. Last but not least, let's take a look at Quadrant Standard here, and we'll take a look at the settings as well before we sign off, but we'll run the benchmark right now. So again, software very similar across the board. Let's go ahead and run this. It seems like it's taking its sweet time. Oh, Quadrant Standard has stopped. Let's try that again. Power up Quadrant Standard, run the benchmark, and let's see what we can do here. Let's make some magic. T-Mobile and Samsung, let's do this. So Android 4.1.2 is the actual software that's updated. You get a more of a revised version of TouchWiz, again, without the nature elements or without most of the nature elements. But what you do get that I like, and I'll show you in just a second, you still get blocking mode and you still get standard setup versus the easier setup mode. So perhaps you're buying this as a discounted device for your mom, your dad, somebody that's new to smartphones. You can set this up in the easy mode and make it much easier for them to kind of get accustomed to Android before you put them on full-on Android. So I'll show you that in just a second once we move through Quadrant Standard, but that's there. The uh, Like I said, the font stuff 
and the uh, system interface is there. So you've got that. You've got the battery percentage. So a lot of stuff carried over. And then, of course, some new customization things to really make the device your own. So Quadrant Standard's running right now. And we'll wrap this up and take a look at what our score is and see if it's improved over previous versions of the Galaxy S2 running ice cream sandwich. So it's completing its tasks. It's chugging, chugging along. And let's see what we can do. Bam. Proceed. And it looks like a score of 3,724. So again, for an older device, a device that's almost two years old, not bad by any stretch of the imagination. 3,724. Hey, it's just nice to get software updates, right? I should point out this is not an over-the-air software update due to its size. It's a huge, huge file. You have to download it through keys and install it through keys. So you have to download that on your computer, get it powered up, plug in that USB cable, and you'll be good to go. Last but not least, show you the settings here so you can see what I'm talking about. Home screen mode, the option between basic mode and easy mode, so you can really make this a device that's easy for a first-time smartphone owner. And then you've got blocking mode as well, so a nice feature from the Galaxy S3 carried over and the Note 2 carried over onto this device where if you have a blocking mode, much like Do Not Disturb on iOS, so turn it on, set it from 10 p.m. to whatever, 6 a.m., and you're not going to get any calls, text messages, with the exceptions of your allowed contacts. So very, very cool update. And, hey, it's free, so go out there and get it and let me know what you think of it. Phone dog underscore Aaron on Twitter, Facebook, facebook.com slash hi Aaron Baker. Let me know what you think of the new update for the Galaxy S2 on T-Mobile, and it actually is rolling out to Sprint as well. So take a look if you're a Sprint customer. Thanks for watching. Keep it locked to the site for continuing coverage. As always, I'll see you next time.